Hello, everyone. Uh, I wanted to welcome you to Anthro Stories, which is an occasional speaker series presented by Kasemnes River College Anthropology. My name is Anastasia Panagakos, and I'm a professor of anthropology here at CRC and today's host. Kasemnes River College sits on the traditional unceded homeland of the Nisenan and Miwok peoples. We remember their continued connection to this region and offer our respect to their elders and to all Miwok and Nisenan people of the past and present. The goal of Anthro Stories is to expose students and the general public to the diverse and dynamic field of anthropology, which is the study of humans. And we like to do this by inviting graduate students and those who are in the early stages of their careers to share their experiences and their advice. I'm delighted to welcome Lee Kraljev, who will be speaking about her educational and career experiences today. Lee is a former community college student, and she has a bachelor's degree in anthropology and a master's in public administration from the University of Southern California. She has numerous international and cross-cultural experiences and currently works for Planned Parenthood. Lee also completed the Los Rios Faculty Diversity Internship Program and is joining our department as its newest instructor. So Lee, I wanna welcome you today to Anthro Stories. We're really excited to have you. And before we turn over to your presentation, um, could you tell us a little bit about how you became interested in anthropology? I know that uh, for many of us, anthropology was pretty mysterious until we arrived at college. Uh, and so um, if you could, you know, again, welcome and uh, tell us a little bit about, about how, how you made your path to anthro. Well, so thank you so much, Anastasia. I'm super flattered and humbled to, to be here and excited to share some more about my background and interest in anthropology. Um, so I was lucky that I was first exposed to anthropology when I was 15 or 16. I was doing a summer program where graduate students were teaching high school students the other things they were majoring in, and I didn't know what class to take. I randomly thought anthropology. Um, actually, I think my mom and dad said, ooh, I don't know what that is. You should try it out. So I said, sure, I'll just try something totally new. It's a new experience. Um, so I started taking that class as a really cool graduate student. And she was just so awesome that already I was interested. And on the first day, we read uh, Body Ritual of the Nasarema, uh, an ethnography that you know it describes this culture that, as you're reading it, especially not knowing anything about anthropology, sounds very bizarre and, and weird and unusual. And you're like, well, what's going on with them? And of course, by the end, you realize that Nasarema is American, spelled backwards. And that just blew my mind. Um, you know, when you're a teenager, young adult, you're at the, the stage where you're really figuring out and starting to understand that the way you lived, the way you've been raised, isn't necessarily universal and starting to learn more about the rest of the world. And so uh, I feel really fortunate that at that time I got exposed to anthropology since it really started to guide and influence my interests and my passions and how I started to view the world and how I wanted to make a difference in it. Uh, so after taking that class, I decided to major in it in college um, in cultural anthropology, since it was you know, learning about other, other people and cultures around the world that really interested me in terms of all the different branches of anthropology. Um, and it, it really, you know, one of the main ways that started guiding my life and work was how I started to understand and care about social justice and human rights. Um, you know, this was 2008 when I started uh, my undergrad and that you know, started becoming more aware of politics and social justice issues going on in California, nationwide and abroad, and recognizing that the way that you've been living, the assumptions you've been making about how things should be aren't necessarily the way that things have to be, um, really helped inspire me to want to get involved in these things. Um, I know that it was, you know, the, um, uh, in 2008 is when Prop 8 was passed in California, which banned gay marriage. And at the time, I, I knew that, that that felt wrong to me. I knew that I wanted marriage equality, but I didn't have the language to explain why. And when people would say, oh, well, you know, marriage has always been between a man and a woman. It's traditional. I didn't know otherwise to be able to say that no, that's not accurate. So it was really taking um, a family and kinship class in anthropology that then gave me the tools to have a language to uh, discuss these things and argue in support of my views and uh, try to make a difference that way. Um, and you know, there were, uh, immigration was, and of course, continues to be a big issue. And so being able to think about 
and understand migration and different cultures and, and the you know, potential conflicts of people coming together um, through an anthropological lens is really helpful. And of course, uh, healthcare is something that, as you'll see, I'm, I'm really passionate about and seeing the impact that, of course, it's, it's a universal thing, health and, and people's health and well-being is universal. And so learning more about how um, people uh, you know, manage their health, different healthcare systems, inspired me to want to go more into public health type work and social justice around healthcare. So that's a lot of sort of what inspired me to initially get interested in sort of how I then launched my, my initial passions and, and career. That's great, thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? I just want to be sure. Okay, yep. and, and so another question um, I would have is, how did you decide on an undergraduate program? So you went to the University of Southern California and which is a great school. And what drew you to USC and, and what were your experiences like as a student there? Yeah, it's not the most exciting answer, but USC ended up being a really affordable option for me. They offered scholarships. And since it was a great university and they made it you know, a good deal for me, um, that's what initially interested me in it. Um, it was also cool going to LA, even though it's still California. Growing up, I grew up born and raised in the Central Valley. And so it was uh, an opportunity to experience a, a different landscape, a different lifestyle, um, different cultures in LA. And yeah, I had a really good experience. Even though USC is a very big school, the anthropology department is actually quite small. Um, so I felt very lucky to be in, in this smaller department. Um, something that I'll actually talk about later is uh, because it's so small, I was also able to get involved in the other branches in, in archaeology and also take a physical anthropology classes, which was uh, really cool. So yeah, that's how I decided on USC. That's fantastic. And um, also, so, and then you continued at USC uh, to get a master's degree in public administration. And I mean, I think that maybe some of us um, wouldn't see the connections immediately. So uh, how did you end up connecting anthropology then with public administration? Yeah, so throughout my undergrad classes, I always loved, you know, whatever topics we were covering with cultural anthropology, but then I would always sort of ask myself, so what next? What can I do now with this understanding of people and cultures? How do I actually apply that to making a change that I want to see in the world? And so I was trying to figure out what master's degree, degree to get, because I wanted to do something that was very applicable, very grounded, very sort of locally focused and giving me the tools to take sort of these theories and ideas that I, and research that I'd done and apply it to actually working with communities, making a change, um, understanding how the different parts of government and nonprofits all work together to support and provide services to all communities, people of different backgrounds that might be in the same community. Um, and so that's definitely what I got through this uh, public administration program. And there's still lots of theory I was able to apply all of my anthropological research and work and, and viewpoints into very specific, you know, how to uh, create a program that serves people of different backgrounds in the community, how to create a program that's, that's considerate of different barriers that people might be facing. So I thought it, was, it was a, ended up being a really wonderful melding of, of the theory and application that I was really looking for with, with anthropology and then on the ground community organizing work. That's great, thank you. And so um, with that, I know I have a few more questions, but I think that we can uh, keep them till the end because it has more to do with uh, advice that you might have for students and, and kind of talking about um, furthering folks' uh, educational uh, goals and anthropology, et cetera. So with that, why don't we um, turn it over to your presentation? And um, again, welcome. We're really happy to have you here this afternoon. And if you'd like to go ahead and, be and begin your presentation, uh, that would be great. Perfect, all right. So um, and as Anastasia said, I'm going to share some about some of my, my winding career educational research path. I know that when I was an undergrad studying anthropology, I thought that the only way or, or the main way to use anthropology was then to become an anthropologist, do research, become a professor, really stay in academics. Um, but as you'll see and as I've discovered, uh, anthropology has has given me incredible opportunities and I've been able to apply it to a whole range of different career paths and jobs and volunteer opportunities that I think have made me much more 
effective um, and allowed me to do a lot more. So my, my sort of career journey definitely hasn't been linear, um, and I definitely haven't necessarily used anthropology in a traditional way. Uh, but I think that uh, it, it's been incredibly beneficial. And if you're studying anthropology or considering studying anthropology, hopefully you'll maybe be inspired of some different ways that you might be able to apply it to your life. So first, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, social justice and community organizing work has ended up being the main focus of my career and, and my biggest passion. And anthropology has been just, just so key to all of that. It really gave me the tools to analyze and understand social justice issues and to effectively work with people to create change. Let's talk about um, four different experiences in this genre. Um, the first, Equality California, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, this is an organization working to overturn Prop 8 and advocating for uh, marriage equality in California. Um, and so first, of course, anthropology gave me the understanding uh, and how to discuss with people the fact that marriage isn't traditionally between a man and a woman in a nuclear family, as we've seen most recently in the United States. There's many different forms of marriage, many different ways to create a family. Um, and so that was really helpful for me, but then also to be able to talk about it with other people. Um, the other way it was helpful is that I was uh, working on fundraising and soliciting donations. And so, you know, something with asking for donations is you have to be able to just ask anyone for money. And it's really difficult. It's very intimidating. And so I would stand on the streets. This is when I was in LA. I was on the streets of Beverly Hills just asking strangers to give me money for gay marriage. Um, and something interesting that I learned was that you could not make assumptions about who to ask. Because it's, it's really tough to just keep getting <laughs> said, said no to over and over again. So sometimes you would try to say, oh, you know, maybe I won't ask this person, I'll ask the next person. And you would be making those assumptions based on what you see. Um, but I discovered, you know, you'd ask someone that you might think, oh, this person, they're probably conservative. They probably don't support, they'll probably yell at me for asking them. And, you know, it turns out, oh, they have a, a child who's gay and is actually super grateful that I'm out here doing this. And so that was a great way. This is when I was an undergrad as well. So that was a really cool way to start um, challenging my own assumptions, putting some of the things I've been learning into practice um, in a way that was advocating for something I was really passionate about. Uh, then I moved on to working on political campaigns. And I went from living in uh, Hollywood and working in Beverly Hills to being plopped in Southern Texas, right next to the Mexican border, and then being told to just start organizing people there, convincing these people who had no idea who I was to volunteer, to make phone calls, to knock doors in order to advocate for uh, a political candidate. And uh, there were many, there were many Texans who were very welcoming and wonderful, of course, but there were also many who did not like a Californian coming in and trying to tell them what to do. Um, and so with community organizing, it's really all about making those connections and learning how to work with people who might be from very different backgrounds from you, learning how to communicate with them and find a, a way that you can work together towards common goals. And of course, that's so much of what you learn in anthropology. It's understanding where people you know, the, the beliefs they might have, where they're coming from, so you can work with them effectively, even though you might have totally different backgrounds and might not think you have that much in common initially. Um, and so that's a political campaign the community organizing. It's something I continue to do, and it's uh, very, very, very helpful to have that foundation in anthropology. The third area that I've worked in is with the Stockton Young Women's Task Force as a board member and advisor. And this is a small nonprofit based in Stockton that really takes an intersectional approach to understanding and addressing the issues that impact women in Stockton. And we, so we were a small group of young women uh, and we were trying to figure out what, what should we do? Like what, what do women in Stockton need? How can we actually make a difference that gives people what they're looking for, that we're not duplicating work, we're not just wasting our time. So we decided to launch a research initiative called the Voices Research Initiative, localizing our identities, cultivating empowered Stocktonians. And the purpose was to just you know ask people what, what they needed and how we could fit into that. So we ended up focusing on childcare and trying to understand what barriers to childcare 
people were facing. So we would just be going door to door in all sorts of different communities in Stockton, asking people to join um, qualitative interview sessions for the research project, as well as complete a quantitative uh, survey to try to gather that information. And having that background in, in doing ethnographies of anthropology, anthropological research, uh, looking at both quantitative and qualitative data in classes uh, was really helpful. Uh, Learn, even knowing what sorts of questions to ask and how to phrase questions is really important that you're asking them in a way that's considerate of, of how, how you about what you're saying is what they're going to be hearing and going into communities that you might not be from and asking potentially really personal things about you know, finances, uh, relationships, these things that could be major barriers to childcare. Um, having that foundation of anthropology allowed us to create, I think, a much more uh, considered uh, a well-rounded, respectful research process. And then Planned Parenthood and Public Health. So I work at Planned Parenthood for almost six years now. Uh, and my focus is engaging communities in making a difference with Planned Parenthood. So finding ways for our supporters throughout Mid-California and Northern Nevada to uh, be able to take action to make a measurable impact when it comes to reproductive health care rights and access. And uh, as you can imagine, understanding, having you know, a strong foundation in cultural competency, understanding um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is really important for my job, but as well as everyone who works at Planned Parenthood. We're serving people from all sorts of different backgrounds throughout you know, diverse communities in California and Nevada. Um, and so it's been really cool actually over the last six years seeing some of the changes that have been made in terms of incorporating more of that DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, into our staff trainings, our volunteer trainings. Um, for those of you who, who are it, working at different companies, nonprofits, but also for profit, you've probably seen that there's been much more of a focus on DEI. And so having that foundation of anthropology, I mean, that, that's what DEI is. It's, it's understanding that people come from different cultures, they have different beliefs, different backgrounds, uh, but making sure that we're treating them equitably, giving them equitable access, and being inclusive of everyone um, is a really valuable skill to have. Uh, and it was actually once I started doing DEI training, cultural competency, cultural humility training uh, for our volunteers, that my passion for teaching anthropology was kind of re-sparked after being out of, out of school for, for what, maybe almost 10 years, um, and which then led me to pursuing, to actually teaching anthropology. So there's, there was so much uh, you know, crossover between what I was doing in my job in terms of what I was teaching people and get, getting them to get on board with practicing diversity, equity, inclusion, cultural competency, that it was a, a really obvious and sort of easy transition to then just teaching anthropology. So the, oh, wrong way. There we go. So the next area um, that I've been able to have some cool experiences in is in a different branch of anthropology, archaeology. So as I mentioned, because we were a pretty small department at USC, there were opportunities to get involved in research with uh, the archaeology department. Um, I, I was also able to take biological anthropology classes. And so that was a really cool way to uh, build out, expand, deepen my understanding of this field overall. Uh, and it also helped me realize that I really did want to focus on cultural anthropology. So I, I was able to do um, the Alalak Excavation and tell all data Survey in Antakya, Turkey. So I applied for a research grant and I was able to go with a team of researchers from USC and University of Chicago to Southern Turkey to work on this uh, excavation. We were excavating post-2000 BC remains, and uh, it was definitely an experience. I learned a lot. I learned that I like air conditioning and shade, which is not available <laughs> at many excavation sites. Um, and what I also found was that I loved talking to people from there. So instead of swinging the pickaxe and doing the digging, I would try to sneak off and hang out with the the kids of the workmen who were from the local village uh, who worked with the archaeologists every summer. And I would just you know, spend time with them. They would invite us to their house to have uh, lunch with them and have tea. Uh, we were invited to go to a wedding. And it, it, so, so that 
reaffirmed that I, I really like, I've, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to travel to these places, but what I really love about it isn't necessarily the archaeology part, even though it's fascinating, but what I really love is that uh, talking to people, learning about them, connecting with them, uh, and understanding what their life is like, um, and, and sharing about myself with them as well. Um, I was also able to do uh, some more local research projects in Southern California, the Native American Cultural Landscape Project, um, and innovation in recording, analyzing, and preserving archaeological data. And so even though I ended up not pursuing archaeology or minoring in archaeology, I'm still really grateful that I had this opportunity um, because it exposed me to new places, cultures, uh, and, and helped me focus on, on cultural anthropology. Then, a little bit of a different area, um, the entertainment industry. So while I was at USC majoring in anthropology, I figured I'm in LA, I might as well minor in film and television. They have a great film and television program there. Uh, so I started doing that in conjunction with my major. And I got a, an internship with a production company, Mayhem Pictures. And once I got to my senior year and doing my senior ethnography and my senior thesis, we had to choose a, a culture to write our ethnography on. And previously, you know, we're going into anthropology, I thought, you know, cultures would have to be from different, you know, different countries, very different to me, it's, you know, about religion and ethnicity and, and race, and that's what makes a culture. But of course, as you study anthropology, you realize that a culture can be within a workplace. So I decided to do my ethnography on, on the culture of this uh, film intelligence production company. And uh, so those are the, the two producers uh, with their good friend, uh, Dwayne Johnson. And uh, it actually ended up being really helpful because I did for several years after I graduate work in the entertainment industry. So I was able to spend a year, you know, quite a luxury since it's quite a competitive field. I got to spend a year interviewing these, you know, very relatively powerful people in the industry. Um, they love to talk about themselves. So they were happy to let me interview them. And then I spent a year just interviewing and then observing as I was interning there. And I was able to come to a better understanding about things like power dynamics, um, gender dynamics within the entertainment industry, um, you know, why it's so difficult to get film and television projects going from idea to actually creation. Uh, so that's an example of a really a pretty unique way that you can use anthropology and, and apply it to a, a, a film intelligent company, a workplace, um, something that you might not initially think of as being a culture and actually really helped me in my work going forward in the entertainment industry, give me such a, a, you know, a, a stronger understanding of the different underlying dynamics at play. Then uh, international research and volunteering. So well, I, one thing I forgot to say at the beginning is one of the reasons I was interested in anthropology is because I really wanted to travel. I was so curious about other places and other cultures and anthropology gives you a great excuse to travel to places. So after, this is, this is, I was, this is well after school, this is when I was working, um, I had the opportunity to volunteer with Salam LABC, Lebanese Association for Development and Communication, and they're an international NGO that provides services and aid distribution to Syrian refugee settlements in Lebanon. And it was actually when I was working on the archaeological excavation in Turkey, we needed to get a, um, an excavation permit from the nearest uh, Turkish embassy, which was in Syria. So we went into Syria for the day uh, while our passports were at the embassy. We just went around Aleppo, went to the bazaars, talked to people. And so that always stuck with me years later when, when the Civil War started, when you saw this you know, terrible refugee situation. I, having had that experience of actually meeting people from there and being able to talk to them made me feel a lot more connected. So I, I started doing research into organizations that I could volunteer work with, but in a very ethical way. There's, there's definitely ethical issues with international volunteering. Um, sometimes it can be more like volunteerism where people pay to just you know, feel like they're doing good and it doesn't actually help the people there. It's more just you know, white saviorism. So I, I wanted to make sure I was finding something that, that seemed like it wasn't that, that I could go there to actually try to do something that, that would be beneficial um, for the organization and for the people. Um, 
And I, I think it's I think it's a pretty good and it's, it's a pretty good volunteer opportunity. So I think there's always issues with uh, international volunteering, but um, rel- I think it was, it's relatively good because it's, they you know I, I arrived in Lebanon. They, you're working, it's like a full-time job, you're working all day doing, uh, I was doing education programs with kids ages three through 18, uh, English and math. Um, and so we would go into these informal settlements, uh, go into their tents, uh, spend time with the kids. Uh, you know, a lot of the time, the benefit, you know, it of course doesn't hurt to give people opportunity to practice English, practice math. But one of the things we were doing was giving the parents a break from their kids who they were with 24 seven and just being able to let the parents then have some time to not be taking care of their kids, um, I hope was helpful. And when, when you're going into someone's home like that, knowing how to be respectful, culturally competent is, is incredibly important. You know, there's, there's a big power differential when you're coming in uh, from the United States for free just to volunteer and then these people who you leave their lives and they're opening their doors to allowing you even if you don't have the credentials really to be teaching children in Lebanon um, and, and so that was a really it was great to have anthropology to be able to approach those interactions to be very respectful it was also a great learning experience um, you know I definitely made mistakes I in some ways I was focusing more on cultural competency rather than cultural humility. And for example, I would assume that uh, if I went into their tent, they would want me to keep my, my arms and shoulders covered at all times. And that wasn't necessarily the case. And so, you know, I'm making assumptions in when really you should just be asking. But having anthropology allowed me to at least understand some expectations and customs and then to be able to ask when I wasn't sure. Um, so I think if you are interested in traveling internationally and especially uh, doing aid work, having that, that foundation of anthropology is, is really, really key to make sure you're doing it as ethically as possible. Um, and then when I was getting my master's degree, I also had the opportunity to do a research project in Argentina. And this was focused on the informal housing settlements in Buenos Aires. And we came in a group of probably 20-ish students with a professor um, to go in, spend some time speaking to people there, learning about different programs, and then making recommendations to the um, city government in Buenos Aires. Uh, and what I learned from this experience and what anthropology gave me the tools to do was to recognize when things weren't handled necessarily very well. Um, and it's something I've definitely taken to, as I'm preparing for teaching a class next semester, making sure that uh, you're making these research projects, educational opportunities accessible for all of the students. Um, for example, uh, half of the students were American students who were several years out of undergrad, you know, late 20s into 30s. And then the other half of the students were straight from undergrad and they were from China. And so not only were we in uh, Buenos Aires, uh, having people from Argentina translate their Spanish into English, they then, you know, English was already their second language. And based on my observations, I didn't feel like the class was set up in a way that allowed all of the students to fully participate and be engaged. And it, it ended up, I think, creating really big barriers for half of the class to really participate. And, and I might not have thought of that if I hadn't didn't have that foundation of anthropology and diversity and equity and inclusion and so that experience has really helped me think about how i want to manage classrooms and make sure that i'm and creating opportunities for all students to be really engaged um, it also wasn't necessarily the most um, in terms of how we approached the informal settlements and the people in there uh, we didn't talk to a single person who actually lived there we only talked to people who were providing services there which I think was a, a really big issue. Uh, we were also told we could walk through the settlements and take pictures. And I thought that wasn't a, a good way to approach the situation. Um, and if it weren't for having already done research and studying anthropology, I might not have recognized that this was a, a real issue and not, not, not the best way to be approaching this type of work. Uh, so going forward, I think, and even though I, 
I, I made several attempts to try to address some of these issues. It, I wasn't very successful. Um, but going forward, I, I think I'm in a much better position to make sure that if I am involved in, in things like this going forward, or when I am teaching a class, I'm taking these things into consideration. So talking about teaching a class, um, as Anastasia mentioned, I am really excited and a little bit in disbelief that I'll be uh, teaching an intro to cultural anthropology medical focused class in the spring semester at CRC. So uh, to do that, uh, of course, part of that was Anastasia being incredibly generous with her time and mentorship, and then being involved in the faculty diversity internship program. So this is an amazing program for students who, or graduate students, uh, people who are just after graduate school, who are interested in becoming a community college professor. And what's so great about this program is it not only gives you, you know, some just of the basic tools of, of teaching, of applying, of interviewing, it also has a huge focus on making sure you're creating a classroom environment that is focused on, on equity, um, that you're respecting students of all backgrounds, that you are appreciating diversity. And of course, that's, that's what anthropology is. So I felt like it was incredible to not only be doing this program, but doing this program with the goal of teaching anthropology because it all just aligned so much. Um, and so far, as I've been um, uh, TAing classes and preparing for this next semester, it's been really incredible to, to, to be able to bring together all of these past experiences, um, you know, the, the great and the not so great, uh, working with different people, different communities, to be able to apply that to how I'm developing a classroom environment. And so, yeah, what's so interesting is that I thought teaching an anthropology class would be mostly focused on the content. They have to be a content expert. And of course, that's important. But what's become obvious as I'm going through this process is what's perhaps even more important is creating an environment that people can learn in. Uh, and, and anthropology is, is giving so many tools to do that. And it just really reminds me that just because this is the way things have been done doesn't mean it's the only way to do things. And, and that's, I think, really true for an academic environment. Uh, just, you know, I, I know that as an undergrad, I had a lot of anxiety with school and with teachers. And I thought that if I didn't understand something, it was my fault. And so being able to recognize that there are different ways to create a culture in a classroom and you can be thinking about the different barriers people might be facing in order to make uh, assignments, lectures, quizzes more accessible um, have been really exciting. So that, that is my presentation. Oops, had to unmute myself there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lee. That was fantastic. And uh, it's really great to see how many different um, types of experiences that you've had, everything from your educational experiences at, at USC to um, going abroad and working with different types of populations. Um, entertainment industry, that's fascinating. And uh, I um, had not an experience in the entertainment industry, but certainly an applied experience uh, working in industrial design that reminded me a lot of the kind of work that you were doing and just how versatile um, anthropology can be in so many different ways. So that really um, spoke to me. And then also thank you for talking about teaching and um, the different perspectives that you bring to anthropology, teaching anthropology at the community college level. And then also just the um, uh, the things that you have to consider as a new instructor. And um, even as, a, as an instructor who's been doing this for a while, I know that um, the partnership that you and I have had has been really great and, and being able to learn from each other um, has made my teaching so much better. So um, I'm very excited to hear all of that. And um, so again, thank you.